For certain types of businesses, recommender systems play a game-changing role. If you can't retain customers with useful tips on content or products, you lose them to rivals. So sooner or later this very question will arise. How can I build a recommender engine? Hi, I'm Alex Kondoforov, Data Science Competence Leader at Altexsoft. In previous videos, I told you about types of recommender technologies. So, you already know that simple solutions will hardly gain you a competitive edge. To generate accurate and engaging recommendations, you need the power of data science and to know how to deal with specific challenges. This video will explain key pitfalls and problems that you will face when developing an advanced recommender system. Let's start from the beginning, identifying and fixing data gaps. Typically, the main data that you would employ to make recommendations are demographics and purchase history, as you may remember from my previous videos. But this alone may not be enough. On top of that, you would need information on user actions on the website, something that many companies don't bother collecting. Consequently, the first problem you are likely to face is the lack of activity data. Activity data includes views, likes, clicks, products added to the shopping cart, time spent on the page, and other interactions. All these signals fall into two large groups – explicit and implicit feedback. Explicit feedback is provided by users intentionally, in the form of likes, ratings, comments, or reviews. It clearly communicates user tastes, so you don't need special tools to understand this type of data. However, explicit feedback is tough to collect. We can't always rely on customers to leave comments and make things obvious for us. To form a clear picture of user preferences, we need to gather implicit feedback as well. Implicit feedback is everything customers do on the website, without specifying their likes or dislikes. For example, a visitor clicked on an item but didn't buy it, or watched 20 minutes of a movie and then turned it off. Maybe the reason was lack of interest. But what if something diverted his or her attention? Who knows? Implicit feedback is abundant and easy to collect, as it doesn't require extra effort or cooperation from users. Unfortunately, it can be extremely hard to interpret. To translate user behavior into user tastes, we need tons of data for more context and powerful tools to analyze it. With data issues finally fixed, we can proceed to the next stage, choosing the algorithms suitable for your business goals and, well, the resources you have. In previous videos, I explained in detail many approaches to building recommendations. To refresh your memory, let's briefly go over key points. The first approach, content-based filtering, discovers similarities between user preferences and product features. Simply put, the algorithm uses the following logic. If you bought this item, you might also like another 10 items with similar attributes. Collaborative filtering, in turn, finds users with tastes similar to yours to recommend you products from their purchase history. Amazon's feature, customers who viewed this item also viewed, is a perfect example of this idea. Both methods come with their own limitations and drawbacks. That's why recommender engines usually take a hybrid approach, teaming up content-based and collaborative filtering elements. In the simplest version of a hybrid system, different types of recommendations can be presented on the website side by side. But large-scale companies use machine learning to merge these two approaches. Here again, we have several options. We can create content-based and collaborative filtering models, train them separately, and then combine their suggestions. Or we can build a single hybrid model that leverages both content and collaborative data. The most powerful recommender systems like Spotify or YouTube use deep learning to combine approaches and build personalized content recommendations. Are they really good enough? Well, judge for yourself. Anyway, with growing amounts of content and an increasing number of online subscribers, deep learning will sooner or later become mainstream for recommender engines. But as of today, simpler and cheaper predictive technologies will do for most businesses. When you at least decide on the most suitable approach and build a recommender model, the next step is to validate its results to achieve a high level of accuracy. And that can also be quite challenging. 
How do we measure algorithm accuracy? A standard metric for recommender models is mean average precision, or MAP for short. The use of MAP means that recommendation involves ranking. The algorithm generates a list of items that are most likely to be preferred by a user and shows top recommendations first. Say, your system recommends five products. And in a real-life scenario, a customer clicks and buys the first product in the list. Bingo! The model perfectly predicts user preferences. But if the user chooses the fourth or fifth item, the algorithm is assessed as less accurate. No matches between recommended items and real purchases? Well, obviously you have to rebuild the model. The accuracy of personalized recommendations heavily depends on the amount of data. The more information you have, the better you can satisfy user tastes. But what if you know little to nothing about your customer? This situation is known as a cold start problem. As I mentioned in previous videos, to address a cold start problem, you can employ basic recommendations, like the list of best sellers for different segments of customers, until you collect enough data. But how much is enough? After which visit or purchase in a row will your advanced algorithm outperform generic top 10s? This question is to be answered at the validation phase. It's critical to know when exactly to apply personalization instead of primitive yet quite effective basic recommendations. So, accuracy and relevance are important qualities of recommendations. But beyond that, there are several other factors to consider. It might sound strange, but the most accurate algorithms are not always the most useful. They create something known as a filter bubble. One of the inherent challenges is that recommendations can limit your experience. That's how TikTok states the problem. How do you address a filter bubble problem? By balancing accuracy with novelty and diversity. Novelty and diversity are different, though related qualities of recommendations. Novelty is about incorporating new, less known pieces in the list of most popular recommended items. Diversity is about widening the range of choices. Access to novel and diverse sources of information is especially important in the recommendation systems for news. The challenge here is to improve these qualities while still matching the user's preferences and search goals. For example, you may offer your visitor the most popular content from other categories, or show niche items people will hardly find anywhere else. Recommending so-called long-tail products along with mainstream content is a good opportunity to hold user attention. Moreover, it can help you achieve another cool advantage that addresses the filter bubble problem – serendipity. There are many ways to explain serendipity. Pleasant surprise, unintended discovery, or even the aha moment. In essence, it broadens the user experience and helps them find something captivating beyond their ordinary area of interest. To be considered serendipitous, a recommended item must be relevant, novel, and unexpected at the same time. For example, your system suggests a little-known folk song to a hip-hop fan. The user has never heard of it and is quite surprised to see it in the recommendations. Nevertheless, the user listens to the track and enjoys it. So, after all, the recommendation turns out to be relevant. This is what true state-of-the-art serendipity looks like. To introduce serendipity, you may offer a few items that are beyond normal user preferences. This will give you a better sense of what can become popular among a wider range of audiences. But besides interest in recommended content, your system must inspire trust. For this reason, your recommendations need some kind of explanation. Users may take a recommender system with a pinch of salt if they don't understand why your algorithm links them to a particular product. Obviously, generic lists of most popular items are self-explanatory. The problem arises when it comes to sophisticated deep learning models. How do tech giants with their complex algorithms address the trust issue? Nothing too fancy. They just offer clear, one-dimensional explanations, no matter how many factors the engine really analyzes. For example, Amazon has gift ideas inspired by your shopping history, and Netflix comes at you with because you watch a feature. So, each specific challenge has a range of solutions, and sometimes they are pretty simple and straightforward. Anyway, to solve a problem, it's important to realize that there is a problem at all. One more thing to realize. You can't develop a recommender engine and just set it aside. To work properly, your algorithm needs to adapt to a rapidly changing environment. As users visit your site again and again, you collect more data. 
Each interaction tells you something new about their tastes. Besides, all data may be not as effective if you change underlying conditions. For instance, you trained your model on the US data, and then you expand it to Europe. American reviews, actions, and likes may not be as relevant to Europeans. The faster your system will respond to all these changes and updates, the better. It means that you need to retrain your models on new data as frequently as possible. Ideally, you would start designing the system with the ability of instant retraining in mind. To sum up, all the above mentioned challenges boil down to one complex task. To build a system that along with recommendations will generate new business opportunities for your company. The core advantage of recommender systems is their ability to improve with use. They continuously adapt to the tastes of customers. So why would your user switch to another provider if you know them so well? You not only understand their preferences, you can amuse them with something unexpected. If properly built, set, and maintained, the system will retain existing customers, attract more subscribers, generate more traffic, sell more products, and give you new data to roll out new improvements. In a way, it's a kind of perpetual motion machine. Where's the try? So, this was the final video in our series about recommender systems. Hope you've got a solid grasp of the idea and ways to realize it in practice. You're welcome to contact us with any questions you may have. Stay tuned, subscribe to our channel. We have plenty of other things to discuss.